Well, good Wednesday morning to you folks. I hope uh, you had a good night's rest. I hope things are going well with you. I'm going to read from the Revival today. We start Revival tomorrow evening uh, out to um, Rehoboth Mission out on Stockham Hill Road in West Portsmouth. David Luke is the pastor. The Satterfields will be singing. I'll be preaching Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 7 o'clock. And then their homecoming is Sunday. God always has a perfect plan. September 1822. But he knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10 Daniel Nash was heartbroken. The church he had poured his life into asked him to leave. He had finished building the church sanctuary, started the Sunday school, and continued a powerful mission work in the South. But the members wanted a younger pastor. And at age 46, Nash was too old for their liking. The members he loved decided to take a vote in a secret meeting to dismiss him as the pastor. Nash was heartbroken and could not understand what God was doing. But God never closes a door without opening another. Soon Nash would meet a new friend, Evangelist Charles Finney. He would begin traveling with Finney and became his constant prayer warrior. Finney left revival work after Daniel Nash died. He said the power is gone. The furnace of affliction can be hot and uncomfortable. It is never the place we desire to be. God never unveils his entire plan for us to see because he wants us to trust him rather than ourselves. Nash would soon realize that God was not finished with him at 46. Rather, he was about to commence on his life work that would bring incredible fruit. God's words in Hebrews 12, 2 and 3 are comforting and help and helpful when we are in those valleys of uncertainty. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, yet lest you be worried and faint in your minds. If we look around us, we will be confused by our circumstances. If we look below us, we will see the one who seeks to destroy us. But if we look up to Jesus, we will see the one who loves us and will never forsake us. All right, this song is called, How Long Has It Been? A question maybe you need to ask yourself, right? How long has it been since you talked with the Lord and told him your heart's hidden secret? How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed? On your knees till the light shone through. How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been? Since you knew that he cared for you How long has it been Since you knelt by your bed And prayed to the Lord up in heaven How long since you knew that he how long to the long night's end? How long has it been since you woke with the dawn and felt that the day was worth living? Can you call him your 
friend How long has it been Since you knew that he cared for you Can you call him your friend How long has it been Since he, you knew that he cared for you Lord, as we come to you, we do thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to look to you for help and strength. God, not just this morning, but every morning. When this song asks, how long has it been since we've nailed? How long has it been since we've cried out? Hopefully we do not go too long. Somebody said one time they were too busy to pray or too busy to read. But the truth is, if we are too busy for those things, we are absolutely too busy, and we need to drop some things from our lives. God, I pray that you would bless and encourage those that hear and listen to this today, that you will give them help and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. See you Thursday.